All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Acer Predator Helios 300 model N20C3 or other model number is PH315-54-714U. Right, we're gonna be using a JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is after I remove them, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Okay, so it looks like we got three here, then we got three, we got one, and then we got four. So let's go ahead and remove all these screws. There are little triangles here, which usually means some that there's some hidden screws or something maybe. So let's see. Okay, maybe not. What does that say? Oh, it just says hot surface. Okay. All right, so in this case, it's not a indicator of a screw. It's just indicators of the surface being hot. Okay. <clears throat> If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, if you can, it'd also be very helpful if you could watch a few of my other videos, like and comment on them because that's what YouTube likes to see. And yeah, other than that, let's continue getting this thing open. All right, so. Once you got all the screws out, we're going to go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. So I like to check where the opening is, and you can see there's a gap here between the palm rest and that. So what we do is I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to try and get my fingernails in that gap. You can use pry tools, of course, whatever works for you. Um, it looks like this one's probably going to be very difficult to get between the cover and that. But let's get in there and see. Nope. Okay, let's see if there's an easier point of entry. The sides. The back. No. Okay, this one looks like you'd need a very thin, small tool to open this. Um, I might have to use my metal pry tool to do this because you can't really get in this gap. Oh, actually, um, there's more of a gap on here on this side. So on this side, the gap goes closer to the bottom instead of up here. So let's see if we can get it open that way. So we're going to open this up. Okay, so I'm going to get my fingernails there, and I'm going to push with my thumbs on the palm rest. Don't push on the touchpad area. And we're going to pull. Okay. And I do feel like there's a gap there that I have access to. Okay. So let's see here. Here you can see we were able to pop it up slightly. Okay, and usually once you get in that gap, you can kind of work your way around to get closer to the front. But uh, let's see, we're, we'll work our way around the side. I'm gonna get my fingernail on the side and go ahead and slide my thumbnail down there while I'm kind of pulling up on here and pushing down on here. Okay, so we got most of that side up, but it looks like the front is just permanently stuck there, so. Let's see here, can we somehow get to the front? Wow, these clips are pretty strong too. Okay, so you can see that side's still stuck. So let's try and go from this side now and pop that side up, same idea. Okay, pull up, push down with your thumbs. Okay, and it should be Yep, we created a gap here, so now we can go ahead and pull up on here, and again, I'm going to slide my thumb down and try and pop the clips up while I pull up. And it's somewhat popped up, but not quite. So, hmm, this design makes it difficult. I think I am really going to have to use the metal pry tool for this because of the way they designed this. Is there a hidden screw? Oh. Is there a hidden screw under here? It says caution and there's like a thing there. I don't know if that's a hidden screw. It might just be an injection mold thing that they're using to cover. So let me see if I can pull under here because I can get under a little gap here. And we'll try and pull on this. So far, no luck. Doesn't want to come out. So I guess let's try with the metal tool. All right, so we've got this. We're gonna get the tool in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and try and just pop the front a little bit. Okay, 
working my way down the side edge and I can see it's popping out. There we go, you can even hear it. And there we go. Yeah, so this one, because it's so thin, the area to pry out, um, using fingernails or plastic tools is probably gonna be very difficult. Okay, so I don't know if you'd be able to do it with those. All right, so we got the sides in front. As you can see, we can now kind of lift this. This side's still a little bit, oh, okay, no, I didn't a screw, it's just it's clipped still. So we're gonna pull up and continue working our way like that. There we go, so we got this up. Then we're gonna grab onto this part and then we're gonna try and wiggle this. It's stuck still. So, okay, it looks like the clips go up to here. So while we're pulling that, let's see if I can get my fingernail in there and no, it doesn't seem to wanna come out. So this is stuck pretty strong. Let's try and pull this down forms a gap there let's see now yeah this is one of the clips are like stuck pretty strong there we go okay and we're going to continue working our way down as you go just pull closer over here continue working on this oops let's see here I accidentally clipped it back closed okay Try switching hands. Work our way down here. That's working. Okay. Continue working your way over. Okay. And the last side here. Open this up. On this. There we go. All right, we got the bottom cover off. That was kind of difficult. So keep that in mind, it's not gonna pop off easily. Okay, anyways, this thing is pretty dusty inside and you can see there's some liquid that got in here. Um, it's all, for the most part, dried, but it, the sugar's kind of gooey. Um, we're gonna clean that up. So I'm gonna use like a toothbrush, brush off this, loosen it up, and then use an electric air blower through the vents to clean it out. So let me do that real quick and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So here you can see it's a lot cleaner now. Um, we're going to try and clean off a little of the coffee stuff using a slightly wet, moist, whatever you want to call it, paper towel. I know people don't like that word, but uh, yeah. And the way you do that is once you wet the paper towel, you want to squeeze it so that no water can drip out because you don't want to accidentally drip water in here while trying to clean it, okay? All right, so far that looks good. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery now because, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in. If you want it to be extra safe, you can do that before even cleaning the dust out. But anyways, here's the battery connector. I use my fingernails at the wings and then I just kind of wiggle it and there you go, it pops out just like that. All right, once you pop that out, it's always best to open up the laptop do it slowly and carefully because it has less screws holding it. And then we're gonna just press and hold the power button here for at least 15 seconds. All right, this helps drain any residual power and makes it a lot safer to work on, okay? So we'll hold this for a few more seconds. All right, there we go. And a lot of people ask like if, I, if they need to do that. Technically, you don't need to do anything like getting out the RAM, they have these clips, you can pull it to the side. Technically, you can just try and rip them out, but why would you do that? <laughs> All right, it takes a few seconds to do, and yeah, it saves the chance or the risk of a lot more damage, so. All right, here you go, it's PC4, 3200AA RAM. There's an eight gig stick, so probably two eight gig sticks, 16 gigs total. You can go with any PC4, 3200AA RAM, you should be fine. Sometimes you can go with faster speed ones, but I don't like to experiment unless um, the customer has time and then we can order maybe some faster speed RAM or something. All right, if you're gonna remove the battery, it looks like there's two screws holding it in place, one on the bottom corner here and then one on this upper corner here. So I'll remove those two screws, then hopefully we can lift this out. Is there a hidden? Maybe there's some hidden screws, no? Okay, is that a clip holding it down? So 
looks like there's like clips holding it. So this you can lift and then you kind of pull it that way and that un or dislodges that clip and then we can go ahead and lift this side and then wiggle it that way. And there we go. There's some tape here. We're going to have to peel off. Carefully peel this tape. It's best to roll the tape backwards. Don't pull it straight up. All right, and here we go. Um, there's the battery model number there. Um, AP18E7M. All right, so that's the battery model number there. Um, I don't know if there's any other model number information there, but that's it. All right, so we'll set that aside. Give me a second, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So here you can see keyboard connector here. These have little flip latches that you can flip up to get them out. Since we're going to be taking the whole motherboard out to check for liquid damage, let's go ahead and remove that. Okay. Once you flip it, you can see we can pull it out. All right. Looks like there's some residue on there, so I'm trying to rub that off. But there we go. All right. Keyboard. Sorry, the touchpad or trackpad connector here. Flip that latch up. You can pull that out. Keyboard backlight connector here. You can also flip that latch out and pull this out. Be very careful with these cables, and if you're pulling it like I am from the sides, you don't want to pinch too hard and then end up damaging those cables. All right, you got the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. So let me actually zoom in more for you guys. All right, so this cable, same thing, the wings, I just grab, wiggle those and keep wiggling and it will eventually, there you go, pop out. Okay, then you got the two and a half inch SATA hard drive, flip that latch and you can pull that out. All right, you got a two and a half inch uh, M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. We'll take that screw out. It pops up at an angle, just like the RAM, and then you can go ahead and pull that out. Okay, just like this. There we go, and we'll set that aside. All right, wireless card here. The antennas, you just pull straight up from the tail, so go underneath and pull straight up, just like that, and just like that. Okay. We're going to have to unroute those cables, um, but anyways, let's go ahead and remove the wireless card. Same thing, one screw pops up, and then you can go ahead and pull and wiggle it out, just like this. Okay. Alright, so we'll set that aside. Okay, the 2.5 inch SATA hard drive here, we're going to have to remove some screws there. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay, four screws holding that in place, so let's go ahead and remove those. Probably going to run out of desk space real soon. Okay, let me get those four screws holding it down and uh, out. Again, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. All right. Four screw out. There we go. Also, if you're wondering why a lot of... Um, YouTubers don't respond to comments. Um, it's best to write a comment on your own comment. Don't reply to other people's comments because when you reply to other people's comments, it doesn't send a notification. All right, so you want to start your own comment thread. Don't don't try and piggyback off someone else's. Um, even if the person commented on the other one before, yeah, it's you're not going to get. Uh, a notification isn't going to be sent. All right, anyways, you got a speaker connector here, so I'm going to grab that by the wings and just wiggle to pull that out. If you want, you can actually pull the whole speaker out. It just, oops, sorry, it just slides up. It has these little rubber things that hold it, and it comes out like that. In this case, because the cable's so short, I'm going to pull that out because it's in the way. Okay, uh, let me actually just leave it more zoomed out because I'm running out of desk space. We got the other speaker over here, same thing, the wing connector. Just wiggle it, and there we go. And again, if you want, you can just go ahead and pull this straight up to get it out. Okay, you got this connector here. Um, what's this? It looks like, uh, probably this is like a lid closed sensor, so it knows when the screen is closed. So flip that latch up and pull that out. Okay, it looks like this little board is a separate one, so you can flip these latches to pull the cable out. So I'm going to flip both, and let's see, does one have more room to pull it out? Not really. I might have to pull the board up to be able to get that out. There's also this cable here as well holding that in or connecting stuff. So same thing, going to grab the wings and wiggle to pull that back. 
All right, does this have a screw holding it down? There's one screw here. I don't know what this screw in the middle of there is for, but let's go ahead and remove this one screw here. Okay, so I got that one screw out. And then hopefully you can see it's like wiggly here. Okay, it looks like let's go ahead and remove the LCD LVDS connector here because it's in the way. So same thing with the wings. I'm just wiggling it and there we go. And we can move that connector out of the way a bit. Then let's go ahead and try and lift this up. And there we go. It looks like I can just leave this side latched down and we're just gonna get the cable or the thing out from here. So let's make sure that cable's in all the way and latch that back down. Looks like there's a little bit of residue here, so I'm gonna clean that off. Okay. All right, on the back, back looks okay, so we'll set that aside. Okay, and Too many screws, I'm gonna confuse myself here. Okay. All right, what else do we got? Um, it looks like there's an, oh, that's what this screw's for. There's another M.2 slot, most likely also PCIe NVMe. So if you wanna add another SSD, you can. Okay, what else, I think? For now, that's it. Let's go ahead and remove this fan here. Hopefully, actually, I don't think it will come out because they taped it here. But you might be able to remove it um, if you had to. You might be able to remove it without taking the whole motherboard out. But I'm not going to mess around with that. I'm just going to remove the screw and we'll see. Okay, so we've got that. And you can see how kind of how loose it is wobbly so most likely you can remove it without removing the whole motherboard okay there's a connector here which it says JTRB1 I'm not too sure what that is but we'll flip that latch and we'll kind of get this out um, sometimes it's a backlight I mean sometimes it's a light strip thing or sometimes it's a uh, power button but uh, I'm gonna fold this back a little bit just to keep it out of the way okay there you go and then let's go ahead and continue removing screws so we got more we got two fan screws on this side okay so we'll remove those as well hopefully you guys are able to keep track of all the screws again it's a lot and you don't want to mix stuff up because they are different size shapes and lengths okay so this one's also kind of wobbly so I think it should be good all right we're gonna get these wireless antennas out. doesn't really matter which one is on top or bottom, but if you want to keep it the same, black ones at the bottom and then the white ones at the top. We'll pull this up, okay? And let's actually peel this adhesive out of the way. Um, this one has a foam piece, so I'm gonna actually peel from this side. It looks like they might have put a slit there or they drew on it, but I'm gonna try and peel, oh yeah, they put a slit there, so that's gonna be annoying. So we're gonna use the antennas to help try and peel it up. So I'm gonna pull the antennas sideways and up, and there you go, it peeled it up where the slit is. Uh, because if you just pull from the tape, you're gonna tear it, okay? Um, and this adhesive, they seem to use like a one-time adhesive that's probably gonna not stick back down very well. But uh, we'll get this out of the way a little bit. Okay, and let's go ahead and continue removing all the screws here. So you got one screw up here. It looks like they do have little arrows that point to where the screws are. So if you take them out and didn't pay attention, then hopefully you can figure out where they go from that. Okay, one there, one here, and one here. Okay, so we got those three. And then at the bottom, it looks like there's two. There's one down here. Same thing, it says M2 by 2.5. So that means it's a two, point, uh, two millimeter thick or wide by 2.5 millimeter long. Um, so there's that. And then this one also says two by 2.5. These are longer ones. These are 2.5 by five, it seems. So thicker and longer screws, okay. 
So there we go. We got all those screws out. I don't know if there's any other hidden ones, but for now that seems to be it. Let's carefully try and lift this motherboard up. Okay, you can see it's lifting. One thing to take note of, um, sometimes the ports do stick out into here. It doesn't look like that in this case, um, but if that's the case, you have to like lift the board at an angle. Um, but let's go ahead and try pulling this out. So it might help to have longer hands, but let's try and do this, or longer fingers, I meant. Okay, so we're going to carefully lift this. Oh, this cable's also trapped under here. So it looks like there's also foam that way. So we're going to try and, again, peel it from the fan side here that doesn't have the foam if we can. Okay, so we're going to peel this. And I'm just rolling the adhesive back, okay? Okay, and then as you can see, yeah, you would be able to remove the fan without removing the motherboard. You do have access to it if you want. You can remove the connector here by wiggling that, and I'm going to flip it that way so that way I have more access to the inside and I can pull the lint and stuff dust that was stuck to the adhesive there. Um, you can also now access the um, radiator fins, whatever you want to call these, and kind of brush it and dust does come off of this, so um, usually what I like to do is brush that and then use an air blower to kind of clear up any dust that's stuck there. You can also like clean if there's dust under here, you can kind of like brush that off, okay? So let's see if we can do that with the other side as well, might as well. And it does somewhat get caught on the screw, screw mount, so you do have to kind of pull it up slightly and then you can kind of do it. Make sure to disconnect the cable obviously. Also take note of which way the connector is. You can see the metal pins through the connector that way. On the bottom you can't so make sure you don't flip it and put it upside down. And I do see a lot of coffee residue here so good thing we're taking that out. There's a lot of like little hairs and stuff here from pets. All right and this is kind of sticky so I'm gonna have to clean this up. Hopefully the stickiness didn't also remain in the keyboard because then over time the keys are going to be very sticky. And if that happens then the keyboard keys would either need to be individually pulled off or the whole keyboard would need to be replaced. And on this model it looks like um, they used melted plastic to hold that in place so it would be a lot easier to replace the entire keyboard assembly. Okay so we got that, we're going to dry it up. All right. So if you notice, I have like a slightly wet, damp paper towel, and then I use a um, dry one to dry it off. And that also helps pull some of the dissolved um, liquid away. If there's a lot of sugar, then that's even more important because if you just do this and you spread the sugary liquid around and then let it dry, it's going to make a thin, sticky film everywhere. Okay, so there we go. I do need to clean this one off as well. I think this side actually has more dust. If you're wondering, this is the GPU side. The other side is for the CPU. And if you're wondering how I know that is the GPU always has like all this extended extra stuff um, to cool the memory for the GPU. Okay. And also some people, um, worry that if they put tape on this it will melt or something but the only part that gets hot is here and then up here kind of the fans themselves don't get very hot and usually the fan blows air through to keep it from getting too hot so unless your fan completely dies you shouldn't have any issue with heat in this specific spot okay Okay, so there we go, we got that cleaned up. It's interesting, the GPU uses metal fins for the fan and then the CPU has plastic ones. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and lift this up. Uh, do take note of the uh, LVDS and the wireless antenna cables. Um, they do go underneath, so you wanna make sure when you put this back that you get those back underneath properly, okay? So let's see if we can carefully lift this out now. Try and go over. It helps to have longer fingers to do this. Uh, I'm going to go underneath now and kind of lift from here. And let's see, can we go from this side and kind of pull up? And there we go. 
All right, carefully route the cables out, the LVDS cable and the wireless antennas, you do have to get those out. They are sticking to this, so there we go. And there we go. All right, so we got the motherboard out. It looks like there is some coffee spill that's underneath there as well, and as well as on the motherboard. So let's put the motherboard down here, and we're gonna clean that off real quick. So there is some stuff under here, but it looks more like maybe dust. Yeah, so this part is just more dusty and then they have more of the liquid there. So luckily it seems most of the liquid is just concentrated on the fans, which aren't really that sensitive as long as it doesn't go in the motors. Um, but worst case, if it does, then you probably just have to replace the, um, the fans themselves, okay? <clears throat> All right, let's take another close look here. And that looks okay. We'll brush this off a little bit more. Oh, there actually is some residue here from the coffee, so we are going to have to clean that up. When you do this, make sure that it's completely dry before turning it back on. Okay, so again, we're using the slightly moist, damp side, and then we're going to use the dry side to dry it off. And we're going to try and just clean all this up. So you want to be careful with static and be careful not to um, rub too hard on these little pieces. You don't want them to tear off the motherboard. Okay, this thing was a little brown, so we cleaned that and now it looks clean, a lot cleaner. Okay, and then looks like the only other area is on these plastic pieces of the fan. So we're going to clean that, probably underneath it as well. Uh, clean that up. We already cleaned the bottom of the fan itself, so um, I'm just going to clean that, try this, see if there's anything under there. It looks okay. So I think we should be pretty good to go. I'm going to just brush off any remaining dust we see here. Got lucky with this one. Lucky they reacted quick and called and then I told them how to fix it by drying everything out and then flip it upside down. Okay, so there we go. That's the board. I'm gonna have to set this aside while we clean up the rest. So let's set that aside. And now we'll look in here. Oh, and I was right. This is for the um, or is that not that's not the power button, huh? That's like the turbo button Yeah, so this is like the turbo button. All right. Anyways, we got Liquid residue here. So we're gonna clean that Try to Clean it best we can Underneath where the fan was Okay You can see the sticker got permanently stained there. We're not gonna be able to do anything because it absorbed the coffee Okay, luckily it seems the keyboard is okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and then use my air blower and the keyboard keys to kind of dry it to make sure it's completely dry. Um, so hopefully nothing will kind of stick or if anything, if it dries and leaves a residue, it'll be a thin layer to where hopefully it won't be too sticky. Okay, there we go. All right, and then we'll try this off. Okay. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for now. Let me go ahead and blow out the keyboard keys and then I'll be back, all right? Let me see here, we can get like kind of a thumbnail or part of thumbnail, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow out the keyboard, make sure it's all dried and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. Let's get this thing back together, all right? Lots of pieces. Okay, so first things first. Obviously, you want this side with the charge port that way. Okay, um, there are lots of like kind of oily, greasy spots from the heat sink. Okay, all right, so 
first things first when you pull this through oh it looks like there might be some residues here i need to kind of clean off a little no, actually not really okay so make sure when you get these we do have to pull the cables through these little holes here okay you don't need to right away guide it through where the tape is but you do want to um, just pull them through those holes to make sure that when you set the motherboard down it's going to be in the right spot all right make sure these cables are down in the right areas as well okay and then we have to make sure these cables don't get trapped underneath okay now we're going to line this up okay <clears throat> slowly work our way over make sure none of these cables are trapped underneath um, this side do I need to okay this side has a little raised screw mount thingy there so we do have to kind of tilt this side up at an angle get all these ports in and then you can see this will line up and then you slowly lower it down so that's very important because if you just try and force it down you're gonna break a hole through the motherboard here or scrape it up underneath and then your computer might not work anymore all right so make sure you get all the cables out this CMOS BIOS battery the keyboard backlight, touchpad, trackpad, keyboard, and this uh, open and close sensor. You also have that. Um, the antennas, the two fan connectors, and then the one back here for the turbo button. I don't know what would happen if you don't plug that in, but uh, yeah, don't forget it. All right, we'll get that cable in, latch that down. Okay, let's go ahead and work on reconnecting all these cables. So I guess for now, I don't, I don't really need a thumbnail there, but let's go ahead and zoom in some more. All right, we're going to do the LCD LVDS uh, cable uh, first. Actually, let's go ahead and put that little board in there. Okay, so we got this little board here. Um, we can actually go ahead and connect these first because I think it has enough play in the cables that we can seat the thing down. Then we're going to pinch the two together. There we go. Get this cable. It does have to go in slightly at an angle because the wings do go over these little raised posts there and then once you got that just slide your finger over to latch it down okay we're gonna get this again and pulling up on the back and then pushing this side down forward first so that it can slide into place okay the headphone jack does need to go into the little hole there there we go okay then we got one screw that was holding that board in place so we'll get that screw back in okay we can go ahead now and actually we'll get the fan screws in there's not exactly a specific order um, the main one is you don't want to plug the battery in until you get everything else in um, other than that there's no particular order you need to do any of this in if you do accidentally connect the battery you do want to press and hold the power button again before messing with this cable all right so let's peel this back up oops the fan went on top so there we go okay so get this we'll line this cable up okay and then we're gonna have to pinch this back in there we go and then make sure that's all lined up in place and then we can go ahead and tape this back down it helps to go from the middle and then the outer edges to make sure it kind of goes more flat <clears throat> okay other fan here oops so Made the fan kind of pull that in. Okay, get that out. There we go. That piece of is kind of stuck on itself a little bit. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and reconnect the fan over here. Again, make sure to take note. This one, the pins are face up, all right? You don't want to put it upside down. So get this cable back in, especially if you buy a replacement fan. Um, yeah, you want to make sure it goes the right way. Okay, so with the little pins faced up, then pinch that back in. Right, you can kind of tuck this cable under there. Same thing with the other side. This cable, line it up. And pinch that in. There we go. All right. And then we're going to get the two screws that we're holding this one in. As far as the motherboard goes, it doesn't have a crazy amount of screws. Okay, we can go ahead and put the motherboard screws back in as well. 
get one up here. One over here. And the last one over here. Okay. You want to make sure all the cables are, are out on top because if you missed anything, you're going to have to take all these screws back out. Not that there's that many, but... Right, and we got one screw down here, and the other one at the opposite corner. Where was that? Did I miss something here? Oh, it's underneath this. Whoops. So I probably shouldn't have put this board back in yet, but let's see. Can we lift this cable out? Yep. Okay, so we'll get this screw in. covered it with this cable so this cable again you have to kind of go in at an angle and there we go and I'll slide my finger over to latch it all right let's go ahead and plug in all these other ones the little open close sensor thing I think it's called like a hall effect sensor all right get that in slide your finger over keyboard connector same thing line it up that in and then slide your finger over to latch it down I feel like it's not in all the way does this one not have those raised wings oh yeah it doesn't okay so just have to get that in okay slide your finger over to latch it down touchpad trackpad connector same thing good latch it down keyboard backlight connector Thing, get that in, and slide your finger over to latch it. We got the CMOS BIOS RTC real time clock battery. Line that up and pinch that in. Also, you want the metal pin exposed there. All right, pinch that in. Make sure you don't flip it upside down. Red wire is to the left, black wire is to the right. Okay. All right, two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. Do you feel like there's dust in the thing up there? Okay. Two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. So this one you kind of just line it up and drop it in af after you push this cable in. So get that cable in. Good. And then drop that down. Okay. Looks good. Hold that in place and slide your finger over the latch. Okay. Let's get the four screws back in. Don't forget the little speakers, so we got that. You can line up the speaker connector and kind of pinch that in, All right? Once you get that, we can actually just drop this back down and push it into place. There we go. Make sure not to push on that. You don't want to damage it. It's a little bit sensitive. Okay, go to the right side. Same thing, get this lined up. And it go and then pinch that into place also same thing metal pins are exposed facing up so don't put it upside down all right line that up push that down okay what else we got the wireless card let's get the wireless card in here goes in at an angle pinch that in And lower it. You want to make sure it's in the right place, that the screw mount is lined up right. Get that in. All right. Then wireless antennas. Okay. Get this one here. And line that up. Okay. Pick that back down. go white antenna same thing oh, there's some dust stuck to that rubber piece there we go line that up the way you know it's lined up is it gets caught on it hooks on that and then once you have it hooked on you can go ahead and press it straight down 
There we go. All right, so we got all of that in. We got these antennas there, so let's go ahead and push the tape down. Okay, just like that. Okay. I don't think this rubber piece was used for anything. Okay, um, SSD, get that, line it up, go at an angle, push that in. Okay, lower this down and get this screw back in. Okay, I think we got all the screws in and everything in except for the battery. We'll do one last quick check to take a look. Everything looks okay. Hopefully we don't need the charger to turn this thing back on because I don't think they brought the charger, but uh, we'll see. It was, it did turn on actually when I first accidentally, I was cleaning the keyboard and powered it on. Um, but usually with liquid damage, you don't want to do that. All right, so I tucked in this little foot first, then we'll get that down. And then we're gonna have to push it up a little, get this foot in, slide it back down, okay and then line that up. Good, we'll get the two screws in, only two screws holding this. One down there, and one up here. Okay, especially since we disconnected the BioCMOS RTC battery, a lot of times the computer might not turn on or it will at least take several boot cycles. It'll restart itself automatically several times before it completely starts up, so keep that in mind, all right? We're going to pinch the battery connector back in now, okay. Oh, this connector is tough. Okay, it doesn't really want to go in. Let's stick this adhesive back there. I'm going to flip it upside down so I have a little bit better leverage here. And also, take note of the connector. The red ones are going towards the side with the USB board that we removed. And then the black wires are going towards the SSD and stuff, okay. There we go. We got that connector in. Let's go ahead and flip this over and see if it powers on before we put the bottom cover back on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and push the power button. I do see the blue light here and the keyboard did light up. So again, since we disconnected the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, it's probably going to take a while before it actually shows anything on the screen. So be patient. If for some reason, it, okay, and the keyboard is also like going on and off. Uh, one other thing is after doing that, if you mess around with the RAM or if it's not turning on even after like a long time, like 10, 20 minutes, then you might want to turn it off. Just force shut it off by holding the power button until there's no power. Take the RAM stick out. Um, sometimes wiping the contacts and putting it back in will help. All right, so it's turning the lights on and off. You see the lights like flashing a little bit. You can kind of see it in the screen there. So there we go. All right, and looks like it's working. We're probably gonna see the Windows 11 thing. Yep, and we should be good to go. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Leave a comment. Um, if it so helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And if you can't do that, or even if you can, it'd also be very helpful if you could watch a few of my other videos and then comment and like them as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. So I'm going to clean off this little plastic cover a little bit because we have it open, so why not? Okay, and then we're just going to put that back on. Okay, as you can see, the computer is on now, and I'm going to now shut it down, okay? So it's always actually a good idea to do a regular restart instead of a shutdown um, after doing any major hardware changes. In this case, technically we didn't do any hardware changes, but we did unplug and replug a bunch of stuff. And the motherboard can remember that because the CMOS BIOS battery runs a little power and it kind of knows. So yeah. And let's go ahead and see if I can go into like BIOS or something. There we go. So I was pressing F2 and delete to go to BIOS so that I can turn it off without it booting anything. And I do see it's showing the C CPU and GPU fans are spinning. Yes, that's good. And let's go ahead and shut this off. Okay, 
There we go. Now we'll flip this guy over. Everything is nice and clean here. Let me zoom in a little more. Maybe a new thumbnail where it's all clean inside. Come on. Oh, that's going to be too far. There we go. Okay. There we go. Bottom cover. Oh, you can actually see they even include a thermal pad for the SSD that's non-existent. <laughs> so that's nice. Oh, it looks like there's a little coffee around the edges. So let me actually wipe that as well. Might as well. Okay, it's a little shiny there. So we got to try that out. It's breaking off pieces of the paper towel. All right, there's some on the outer edge on the back as well. the back looks like the clips kind of broke off so hmm I'm not sure how you would more safely take the back cover part off but it looks like there are these little clips here or I don't know what those are but oh, most of those kind of just tore off yeah hmm I'm going to see if I can put a little super glue on this one because this back one is kind of pulling up. So. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure how you would remove that without those clips breaking off. They seem to be pretty delicate and they seem to go like straight into the back of the thing so you'd probably have to find a way to pull the cover backwards while you do that okay so but in this case it's already ripped off so it's too late the rest of the clips seem to be okay and this thing is still popping up so let me figure this out with the i need a little more super glue but yeah, I don't want to do it over this, so I'm going to pause and I'll be back. Alright, so I'm back, and this piece now is holding well. Alright, so the way it's designed, you basically have to get the back part in first um, because of those. And let's see if I can show here. Actually, here I don't even see where those clips... Oh, I guess um, it has like the two little pieces, it clips into this 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 like that so you'd have to somehow get in and like pull this straight um away from there um anyways let's go ahead and get those back in so you can hear that clicked okay oh it looks like for some reason this is popping out i don't know huh they must have like damaged that because i didn't do anything with this part this is where the hinge is all right anyways we got that in we're gonna work our way down the sides work our way down the front all right um, if the clips did break um, you don't have to worry too bad because they do have screws all the way around um, but it is nice to know like how to remove this so this one um, now i know you have to pull it back so that way hopefully in the future if i open another one of these those clips will remain intact all right so anyways let's get all these screws back in and that's pretty much it again hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did please make sure to like subscribe <clears throat> comment share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or impair their devices as well if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living it's always nice to say like thanks i saved you a hundred dollars but if i saved you a hundred dollars um even if you can only send me like 10 cents that'd be better than nothing um don't be embarrassed if you can only send like a few cents uh because if everybody that was embarrassed did that, it'd be quite a bit of money, and I'd rather have 10 cents, 5 cents, 1 cent here and there than nothing at all. Like, I even collect bottles and cans because it's like 5 cents, so <laughs> every little bit counts. It all adds up, and it's better than nothing, so yeah. All right, let's go get all these screws in. Also, if you can't do that, um, it helps a lot if you can watch a bunch of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. Alright, so anyways, we got the last screw in, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Alright, let's drop this. Bye.